Hey y'all. It's Chuseok weekend and um, I'm working on another video and I'm also working on a double D podcast. So imagine me working on Chuseok, the life of YouTube. Honestly, YouTubers, we, we have no vacation. I feel like if you're gonna do YouTube like consistently, sis, there's no such thing as vacation. Um, Originally, I was gonna do a, um just like my literal daily ma everyday makeup, this tag cushion shit, all the stuff I got from Daiso Hunt, I've been on it but there was another thing i wanted to film because i bought all this new stuff from this brand called joycey honey it's, she's giving badass she's giving chinese fancy beauty and i thought it'd be really cute with this hoodie that eddie got me I don't know what these are. Are they horns or are they just like ears? Apparently Jenny wore this for some shit to like the airport or something. I don't know. It's from this brand. Thanks, Eddie. Uh -huh. So we're just going to sit here and play with makeup, chit chat, talk. I uploaded that trying Daiso whatever makeup video the other day. And the same day I had Yakso with a friend. Like we were meeting up for dinner in Itaewon. So I was like, oh, while I'm on my way, I'll stop by Daiso again to see if I can pick up any more of like the, like I was saying in the video, like the eyeshadow. Like, and also I was checking to see if maybe they restocked some of the stuff that was sold out like the cool tone like shading and all that shit and i don't want to say it was because of me I'm like, as soon as i got there all the cushions are gone like literally all the cushions were gone but i just think that cushion is popular in general in korea and at the time that i originally bought it i guess i just went when they had some in stock and what they had in stock was just the shade number two which luckily for me is my color i use it with this puff i got from taobao i don't really use this for liquid foundation i like to use this for cushion foundation because it's just so much faster and easier. So I dip that shit in there and just... There, that's it. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> Not me going back to my uh, daycare days. Do y'all remember when I used to do work at a fucking daycare on the army base? When I first came to Korea, I worked at the US army base at the daycare center. And to be honest, it's... <laughs> <gasps> oh god. I'm glad I had the experience to be honest because it made me appreciate kids better. Because honey, I I do not, not that I don't like kids, but I just know how to act around kids. I'm just like I'm just like pets. I'm like awkward. I'm like so cute. Oh my god, that's also around the same time that I uh, had that accident where I had I used to have one of those like one wheel scooter things, those monobike things. And this is before scooters were really a thing in, in Korea. On the side of the sidewalk, there was like a, a stone hedge kind of thing because the park right next to the sidewalk was on a higher elevation. So girl, I ran in, I like was not even going that fast either. Uh, I was going at a very regular speed and then I hit the rock hedging thing and I fucking, I literally, I flew, I flew, flew. And I landed like basically on my face. It was embarrassing, but also I got like literal scars in my face because uh, I had like lacerations from falling. <laughs> and that's it. That's all I do for my uh, cushion foundation because I'm going to use a concealer, of course, the Sam. And I've been really into the, well, really into? It's more so just it's, it's sitting right there on my vanity. So I just grabbed it, the Clio Foundwear Concealer. I dumped some out on the back of my hand, just like this. And I just be taking my Hua Hong concealer brush, dimming it in here like this. And it's just like Photoshop for the face, honey. Go under the eyes. I usually start with a corrector. Why was I talking about working there again? Oh yeah, that was a uh, that was an era. The uh, grind of trying to build my YouTube channel at the same time as having a part-time job. Technically, on paper, it's a part-time job, but honey, because of the way the system is in uh, the military, when you're in the military, you often have the soldiers like moving around, right? Like the families. Um, and Korea is one of the places that you can move to. But amongst all the countries, it's like the shortest tour that soldiers will have. Like I've lived in Germany for Germany or like European countries, you'll be there for like three, four years. But in Korea, usually they'll be here for like a year or two. And so um, a lot of the staff that would be working at the daycare are usually the like you'll have soldiers, a lot of soldiers' wives. But because the tour is usually so short in Korea, because you start working there, right? You got to learn the systems. You got to train a little bit. Because it is childcare, there is a lot of stuff involved. If people keep changing, it's hard to like get a consistent group of staff. And so I felt bad for the kids, to be honest, because they would get like attached to a teacher and then they leave and it's just oh, a mess. And honestly, I feel like we could never truly, because I did not, I have no experience with teaching. It really felt like they expected us to be teachers basically because we gotta we had to make lessons and plans, we gotta 
and do all that shit. Not shit, all that stuff. Which I think is good because I think it's really important to, you know, obviously these are kids. They are future. So we have to nurture them, we gotta teach them, you know, the ways of life. Yeah, I mean, it's after it's after school care. Like after school, they will come to our place while their parents are still at work and they would get picked up. But yeah, we can just have them like playing video games all the time, but the parents are paying for the service, right? So oftentimes they expect for the children to get do other stuff like learning things, like arts and crafts. But with us being so understaffed, not just like the teachers themselves, but also like the management. There's not enough people, honey, especially in the, uh, what is it? The, because I was on the side where it's like elementary school, but there was another building for like babies and like really, really young kids, like toddlers. Oh my God, honey, they, oh, I felt so bad for them. All the staff there struggling every day. Cause we had the ratio thing where if you have a certain number of kids in a room, there has to be a certain number of staff. So we're constantly switching out and they were very anal about this. So uh, when we have things like inspections, if they see the ratio kind of going off, like there's not enough teachers in the room at any one time. Like even if the teacher has to leave for like 2.5 seconds, it's not even like leaving the room. It's like leaving the area. Cause our rooms will be like sectioned off right so it was just a, a wild time why the fuck did i bring all this up anyway that was my job before i was able to make like a proper income on youtube so if you remember me from that era shout out to you also shout out to russell he was like my bestie when uh when i first came to korea he was like my first co co-worker and first kind of like a really close friend shout out to you i love how i'm like oh my god this cushion that i'm using it's so quick and easy i just slap it on but here i am being so fucking meticulous with my concealer i don't know man like when you grow up having shit skin and like being like acne and all that and you learn how to do makeup to cover it honey the skills you learn over time i feel like are so invaluable and people that are born with good skin that do makeup I don't know, the skills are just different because you obviously grow up learning to do makeup on good skin. Mind you, just because if you're like a case like me, doesn't necessarily mean you do good makeup. You know, sometimes uh, people that are born with bad skin that learn to do makeup, just put it on so fucking heavy because they're used to putting heavy foundations. So not everyone, you know, grew up the same learning makeup, but de definitely between people that are born with good skin, people that are born with acne prone skin, the makeup skills I feel like are just different. Oh, by the way, the other day, um, I, my friend Isaac, the flower boy, he called me once and I was, he, this bitch never calls me. What the fuck is up? And apparently longtime subscriber of mine visited his shop and was like, uh, to be honest, I don't know what the story was, but I think it was because she thought I was going to be there or something. But um, long time subscriber, I believe her name is Monica. Monica, if you're watching this, shout out to you, honey. She's from Poland, I think. Oh my God, Monica. You watch you get her name wrong. Watch you get her country of origin wrong. If you follow me on Instagram, I posted that story a while ago talking about like, oh, if you ever want me to do your makeup and like personal color, I'm thinking about doing blah, 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 blah. And I never followed through that. She was like, yeah, I saw that story. And I replied and you were like, N I, I never heard about it again. <laughs> Cause I feel like that's something I have to like really set up and all that stuff. But she was like, oh, I'm in Korea for a few more days. I was wondering if I was like, yeah, sure, I'll do your makeup. I'll, well, I'll help you with your makeup. And you know, I couldn't give her like a full ass, like personal color analysis. It was, we were doing it at Isaac's shop. Oh, this powder. Oh. <gasps> Oh, the concept for me that day was just going through her makeup pouch and helping her with her regular makeup routine, like areas that she can improve in, how she can use her products better, or the colors in her makeup pouch that would suit her and stuff. And I think it went pretty well. I believe we came down to her being like a soft summer, just like me, or like a, kind of like a soft autumn. To be honest, I could see her wearing both warm and cool, but she really loves glitter and stuff. So I, I showed her a routine that, because normally, Usually you'll hear a lot of personal color and ask people like in Korea talking about how soft summers and soft autumns like don't look good in a lot of shimmer and shit, but honey, a girl wants what a girl wants. I showed her a way that she can utilize her shimmers and glitters and not make it look too crazy. So she was super adorable. She's very, very kind. Uh, but I don't know, it kind of made me think, because even my friend mentioned this, like, oh, if you're gonna do this kind of service, you do have to realize that you're probably gonna have fans that are wanna have the service for you and more so than, you know, learning anything from, they're really just doing it to meet you. You know, like there's this whole conversation about ah, parasocial relationships or whatever, but if I'm gonna be completely honest, I feel like the really crazy ones would be the really young ones that probably wouldn't be able to afford. Whenever there's like a paywall for something, I feel like that's like the, the blockage for like, you know, the really crazy, crazy fans, but. I don't think I have any like insane fans. So anyway, if I'm gonna be doing a service like that, honey, it's gonna be serious <laughs> because I don't want you to waste your money, right? I want you to make sure like, if you're paying to see me, you get proper service after we finish her makeup, honey. Like she's already pretty. So like we didn't really have to do much. It's more about enhancing her face. And 
I think at this point, I'm starting to realize that's kind of the makeup, makeup that I'm into. I know I do all this like, you know, doy makeup and like eggosa and like all this shit, but like I do love a good, just natural enhancing makeup. That's why if you watch all my videos on my channel, whenever I do other people's makeup, it's really just about enhancing what they have. And whenever I do try to do like the crazy shit, it just never works out. So I'm gonna use this powder foundation. I got a lighter color. I was like, I want something like black, not blinding because it's a matte highlighter, but something more intense to like really pop out these areas. But I think it might be too pale. It almost looks white on me. So, <sighs> no. Oh my God, by the way, there's just so many fucking bitches named Eddie in my life, right? Anyway, y'all remember Miss QX Eddie? <laughs> Before the pandemic, he came to Korea and we were like, oh my god, we were like this. We lived together for a bit, we hung out all the time, we uh, made many videos together, which, oh my god, those videos are just, to this day, are still so fucking funny to me. But he went back to America uh, during COVID and stuff, but this bitch is back in Korea. And honey, I've been hanging out with her. I filmed a video for Eddie recently, the, his cover of Misamo's Do Not Touch. I don't know when he's uploading that, but honey, killing it. It really reminded me of like, it really brought me back to the good old days when he was in Korea last time. But he's back and honey, we've been literally, we've been clubbing and partying every single, no, not every single day, but more so than I would normally in my real life. And so I've just been so exhausted, but I can't deny that it's been really fun just to be able to go to the club and like, listen, I know there's a lot of people that don't like going to a club to listen to K-pop, but for me, it's a good fucking time. We don't just go to K-pop clubs, but that tends to be where we really pop off. So we've been going to M is it MG? I never know, it's MGG or MMG? Anyway, MGG up in Homo Hill. Actually, no, not Homo Hill. It's like in front, it's nearby Homo Hill. It's not like in there, you know, like Soho, Queen, all that shit. It's not there. If you're like me, if you're introverted, it helps to bring an extroverted friend out and go there not to like, cause I would be going there thinking like, oh, I'm gonna find a man, so I'm gonna find him. To go to the club with a mindset like that, I feel like it's just gonna be like, the downfall. Go with just the idea of just having a good time with your friends, dancing, you know, drinking if you drink. Drink responsibly. Also in this day and age of all these, you know, new K-pop dances and like, I don't know. It's just nice to be able to go to the club and then you start and play, maybe playing music from like second generation K-pop. Girl, maybe when they played four minutes music, my body, like parts of my mem core memories were unlocked and my body started moving in ways that I haven't moved in in so long. Truly, four minutes music is like the blueprint. <laughs> and yes, when you know, like G Idols, Queen Card comes up, yeah, we'll have a good time. I'm not saying yeah, but I don't know. There's something about second generation music that just hits different. I do think it's kind of funny though that it's kind of like a known thing in the Korean gay club that in the K-pop world, when you have these flop groups, right? These flop girl groups that are not popular in general with the Korean public. But honey, if there are flops in the Korean general public, they're gonna be queens up at the gay club. <laughs> so songs that don't necessarily do well in terms of sales and charts in Korea, honey, you know the bottoms are gonna be on it at the gay club in Korea. Full choreography, bitch. And I think it's so funny when uh, places like King, you go up on stage and they got full, like, they take into consideration where they're standing on stage. So they'll even do like full ass, like positioning and like formations. <laughs> honey, I heard even one time that uh, there was a Twice song playing and these two girlies were like literally physically fighting over being, I believe it was What Is Love? And it was Chiyo's solo part. And apparently these two bitches were like, I'm the fucking center, bitch. It got so bad, apparently they went, had to go outside and were physically fighting. Don't be rude. Are you kidding me? I don't know if it's true or not, but I heard from a friend that, you know, often is a, a regular at these clubs. So I believed him. And to be honest, I can see it. <laughs> it's so much drama. So it's just so funny to me, especially when, uh, <laughs> When Eddie is like dressed up in which a lot of Koreans would assume is like a wild foreigner, like this crazy foreigner, but Eddie's just there to have a good time. Well, in general, us, we're just there to have a good time. So the whole time we'll just have our drinks, we're kind of just like, you know, jiving. But then when it's our particular songs that we like, that's when we get a little bit crazier. But I don't know, it's just a good time. So if you ever see us there, um, say hello. I got this Joycey stuff. I don't know, I saw it. Apparently this is, so Joycey, Chinese brand, I think. I believe this is a limited edition like series, but I saw it on AliExpress, I picked it up. It reminded me a lot of Fenty, like the aesthetic of the packaging, but um, on the inside, the eyeshadow was like speaking to me. Love it. You know, I do a lot of videos, talk about AliExpress makeup, and so all, usually it's really cheap, but this stuff is like moderately priced. I still don't think it was like horribly expensive, but it definitely costs more than the regular cheap AliExpress makeup that I'd be showing you guys. Literally, as I'm editing this, everything is sold out on AliExpress, but I see some things available on other sites, which I'll try to link down below. This is the eyeshadow. Oh, oh, look at that. 
I mean, nothing exciting, but it's still really fucking pretty. I don't know what this says on the back of the package. I'm just gonna hop. Ooh, she's textured. Let's start with the middle shade. Oh shit, let me zoom in. Oi. Oop, a little powdery. Oop. Oh my God, another thing is that when you hang out with Eddie, bitch, you literally just end up talking. Like he talks the way, <laughs> one of the things I love about Eddie is like his, he has his own goddamn like, not language, but like way of speaking. And it catches on so quickly. Like it literally, if you, meet us as a group, we all literally end up talking the same. It's just a bunch of moaning and like, sis. It's just that the whole time. Have you seen that uh, SNL skit with Megan Thee Stallion where she's like, girl, girl. The whole conversation was just them saying girl, but they were able to have a full ass conversation. That's us. Girl, 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 girl. Fuck, I forgot to do my egg aside. Let's Let me see if this is, this is not as bright as the powder I use on my face. That powder I love to use for my egg aside, but this one, let's see if she does anything. Hmm. Very standard ivory shadow. There's not really any ready shadows, so let's just use, I don't know. Do I have to explain any of this shit? I truly do make these videos just as to use, almost like in a podcast style, where uh, just something to play in the fucking background. I don't know why I spend so much time showing you product. Let's do the actual egg just higher. <gasps> Speaking of, oi. did you see y'all see XG's new puppet show? Oh my god, I want to make a. We need to make a whole ass video just talking about that. This album promotion cycle has been very interesting. It's very, very. Hello everyone, my name is Barry. It's giving very like Japanese album vibes because they release singles and then an album at the end that has those singles. Oh, honey, this isn't even like pre-release single. This we're talking like months in advance of the album. It was like triggering the J-pop fan in me. I'm not gonna lie, I was very much, you know, waiting for that Shooting Star 2.0 or Left Right 2.0 and uh, we kind of got tinges of it in like New Dance and stuff, but to be honest, I kind of, it kind of grew on me this whole like varied album. I will say the fact that X Gene, the song, is only a minute and a half. <laughs> I'm using the darkest shade in the palette, by the way. Not that you care. <laughs> so yeah, it's been a very interesting album release cycle and Puppet Show, honey, that shit has got me fucking popping my pussy at the club because it's actually pretty subdued compared to a lot of the other title tracks. It's sort of TGIF and like Girl Gang going so fucking hard. So it is a little bit different, but I kind of like it. And honey, that bridge, let's talk about that bridge. Uh, I've always loved a good piano and like R&B vocal. So that shit was right up my fucking alley. And some people were saying that the music video for Puppet Show was pretty subdued compared to Girl Gang and like TGIF. But I think as a person that edits the YouTube videos, TGIF and Girl Gang, in terms of sets, they didn't have that many sets. It's just there was a lot of editing which is cool and shit but sometimes it hurts my eyes because there's just so much shit going on so i did appreciate puppet shows very more subdued editing i do think like the styling though was fucking on point i don't know what the fuck they did with harvey's teeth i saw a comment on a youtube short saying like oh in japan the woman makes her teeth black during marriage or something like that anyway i was like does it have anything to do with that it was kind of giving vibes like that because clothing was giving very like wedding realness and maybe that has something to do with but or it could have just been a stylistic choice seeing as they weren't even black but a sparkling red I love the opening shot of like, I guess the puppets kind of looming over the camera. So fucking epic. It was giving me very much high budget version of Azile Banks' um, Ice Princess. I think it's called Ice Princess. It was giving me very much that vibe. I mean, I'm obsessed. So the combination of like the camera angles, the visuals, the shots, the styling, and just like, I don't know, everything. It was like perfect to me. Also, I saw another comment on Reddit saying how this person saw a comment that a lot of the crazy styling works is because the girls aren't conventionally pretty but honestly we're just so fucking used to like these unreal visuals in k-pop like karina chang won young that we literally see girls who are fucking pretty as fuck prettier than the average person and then we consider that not pretty I think it's crazy. I think we're just so used to like these overly beautiful visuals that when we see prettier than average people, we almost think like, oh, they're not. Uh, it's wild to me. I do love though that they're more out there with their style and not afraid to be a little bit, you know, ugly. They're giving us concepts. They're giving us new ideas. So it's just, I'm eating that shit right up. These two shimmers in here are kind of giving me life. Uh, <laughs> Was this 2016? Let's use the more subtle shimmer just here. Oh, that's more of like a white shimmer, isn't it? And this chunkier one just on my egg is higher. 
why don't fucking American companies do shit like this? It's either like the most boring, like nudes eye palette, which that's not a bad thing in itself, but can we do nudes like this? Why, why they all gotta be looking orange and shit? Which is why I'm kind of excited for Kylie's new eyeshadow palette, which looks very cool tone. It's giving very C-Beauty vibes. But either, whether it be C-Beauty or K-Beauty, why don't these American beauty companies take some notes? Because it's either all warm, brown, orangey nudes, or just like really crazy fucking colors that obviously nobody's gonna use in their daily life. No hate to the people that do love like the colorful and more extravagant makeup. I'm so fucking jealous of you. I wish I could do that. I don't know, I feel like if you're gonna spend money on something, you'd want it to be like useful for like, every day, you know what I mean? If you wear makeup, not just leaving it to like, oh, this for, I'll wear this during a special occasion. I feel like that's such a waste of space, you know what I mean? And don't get me wrong, there's many colorful eyeshadow palettes I find you can make good use of. I think my problem is these ones that have no proper color story and are just random. <gasps> no, I had to swatch this when I first got it. I was like, what is this? Oh, holy. Okay, okay, okay. I'm gonna dip in with my finger. Ah, uh, ha! Okay, okay, watch. Ah, uh, are you fucking kidding me? Look at that. I am upset. It's like this taupey brown purpley base with this insane shimmer. It's fucking game over. It's fucking game over. <laughs> it does get kind of messy though, so. If you have trouble getting shimmers and glitters off your face before you wash them, try using like a really soft spoolie brush like this. They all look the same, but the the fibers are different. This one is extremely soft, so it doesn't hurt or, or like scratch the skin. Uh, I like to use stuff like this to kind of like get the excessive glitter off and then it makes washing my face much easier. Make sure you use a good cleansing balm or oil. Oh! Oh! It's game over, y'all. Again, I don't want the shimmer all over, so I'm gonna use this to blend it out, the edge. Just, so, oh my God. <gasps> you need to be careful. This shit, I, I, I barely tap, and I get so much product on my finger. <gasps> I was telling you how I love the Bridge and Puppet Show. I love bridges in songs that make you feel like you're in a music video, if that makes sense. A whole thing to like that vibe. <laughs> I love a good song that makes you feel like I'm on stage. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for coming out tonight. This one's for you. The packaging on all this shit, by the way, is so fucking cute. Like, I don't even want to throw it away. Besides the actual packaging of the products, the boxing, it's like this, uh, what is it? What do you call this? With the string, you gotta wrap it in shit. It's very cute. So hungry. <gasps> I haven't, you know, I had a cookie today. <gasps> if you're visiting Ituan or specifically the Hebangchon area, the HBC area, visit Bounce Cafe. It's so cute. If you live in Korea and you miss Pop Tarts, they sell Pop Tarts. Five dollars a pop. But he does add like uh, ice cream and like all that shit. So it's not just Pop Tarts. But the cakes that also sell there are so fucking delicious. Like the that like layered cake. I forgot what it's called, but it's so delicious. And I love the vibes, because usually the vibes of cafes in Korea are all like, minimal, simple as fast. But uh, it's pretty simple there as well. But I just love like the basketball theme that's going on. Because apparently the owner, who I'm kind of like, we're like besties now, <laughs> but uh, he manages a woman's a basketball team. But apparently he was like a baker back in the day. And so he's testing out new menu items. And he was like, oh, Eddie, I'm trying to make this cookie. Uh, let me know your opinion. I will, honey. It was giving what needed to be given. I feel like with cookies, there's like, everyone has their own preference for them. But for me, my favorite cookie has always been my aunt's cookies. Cause she, I don't know what the fuck she puts in them or the way she makes it. It's very like chewy, but like a firm chewy. And it's like my favorite kind. And his honey, he made that. So I don't know when um, he's gonna actually have that as a menu item, but honey, so far what he's got going on, my ass gonna be there. I had that for breakfast today because he gave me, he made a, a batch to test out and he gave me some of them. But there's a lipstick and there is a lip gloss and they're both very just like this vibe, very bad girl sort of muted, rosewood, nudie, like the kind of lip swatches you see on social media 
of like the the Chinese girlies with like their super plump like girl ha like 90% of those the coloring and editing on them is so makes the color completely different they do that a lot especially with like department store lip products they'll be like oh this is like my favorite department store lip glosses or lip tints you buy them in person they're completely different so these Chinese girlies be making these products better than they really are but these colors that I got and also this lip gloss one oh my god this is fucking so beautiful oh girl you don't get this shit in many brands i only ever see colors like this in like kaleidos it reminds me a lot of hot pursuit from their recent collection that i reviewed let's try the lipstick first oh wow that's like excuse my verbiage but that's like poop colored <laughs> but like in a, in a nice way <laughs> it's weird because it's like a really cool tone nude brow but with like almost like a yellow undertone but usually a yellow undertone means warm but it's still cool toned uh neutral oh my god <laughs> The one I just described with all those words, neutral is what I meant. <laughs> that is sexy. Oh, I, oh. I've been talking so damn much in this video though, so it's giving like butthole, but it's giving smooth butthole. It's giving soft focused butthole. Oh, I, uh, I'm gonna wipe this off to use the gloss, but let's see what the gloss will look like on top of this if you use both of them together. And as I expected, the same thing, but just glossy. <laughs> Okay, putting some foundation on my lips because I want this to really show up and on my red lips, it won't show up properly, so. Oh. Oh my god, girl. I know people that don't really have color in their lips are always like, oh my god, I need to put something on my lips. I wish I had color like yours, Edward, because my lips are too red. But girl, if I had no color lips, my lipstick loving ass would like be living its best life. I so badly wish my neck wasn't so long because I can't give like the cute like huh, hoodie vibes because my neck is so long when I put the actual hoodie on. <laughs> my shoulder is down here. That's how long my fucking neck is. So I can't give the cute like... Because there's just so much neck going on. Anyway, I don't know if you celebrate Chuseok or not. I don't know. When, this is probably going up after Chuseok. But I hope you had a good time with me today. Stay safe. Eat more than a cookie for breakfast. I'll see y'all later. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs>